I'm going to show you how to do the A-level physics practical determining the capacitance of a capacitor using a log graph. I've already built my circuit. It might look complicated from where you're sitting, but all I have is a battery. I have that hooked up to a switch and then one of those connections is going to my capacitor. So I have a loop with my switch, battery and capacitor. I also have an analog voltmeter in parallel across the capacitor. That allows me to see what the potential difference is across it. That's what we're going to be measuring today. Just checking that my voltmeter is zeroed correctly. We don't want a systematic error. If I connect my battery to my capacitor now, you might be able to see that we now have a PD of well, about five volts across my capacitor. Now I'm using an analog voltmeter instead of a multimeter today because it's much easier to see exactly when you have one volt, two volts, that kind of thing, because when you use a digital voltmeter or a multimeter, it does have a refresh rate, which means that it updates the numbers every half a second or one second. That's not ideal for this, so an analog voltmeter is best. Then I've got the other end of the switch connected to my resistor. Now I don't know what resistor I'm going to need quite yet because I'm going to pretend that I don't actually know the capacitance of the capacitor. So we don't know what kind of times we're gonna be dealing with. So I'll tell you what, let's try and use a 200 ohm resistor first and see what happens when I discharge the capacitor through that. When I flick my switch now, I'm gonna be bypassing the battery and now my capacitor is just going to be in series with the resistor, which means that charge is gonna flow from one plate of the capacitor to the other through the resistor. Let's see what happens. Wow, so the PD decreased very, very quickly, too quickly for us to do any measurements. So we want a higher resistance in order to make sure that it discharges more slowly. And so you might have to do this. Try out different resistors until you get a fairly long time for you to take readings over. Okay, what about 1000 ohms, one kilo ohms? So let's charge up the capacitor again and let's discharge it and see what happens. Again, it's still discharging fairly quickly. Let's go for a really high resistance, shall we? Let's go for 10 kilo ohms. So I've charged the capacitor, let's discharge it. Brilliant. Now the capacitor is discharging fairly slowly, not too slowly, and so we can start timing how long it takes to drop to a certain PD. Now there are a few different ways that you can do this. Either you can time how long it takes for the PD to drop from an initial PD of your choosing to another PD, or you can measure what the PD is after a certain time. The more accurate way of doing it is to time how long it takes to reach a certain PD. That way, all you have to do is stop the stop clock when the needle on your voltmeter reaches a certain PD. Otherwise, you're going to be left judging where the needle is when it reaches a certain time, and that's less accurate. You can choose what initial PD you have. It doesn't need to be the max PD when charged. In fact, you don't want it to be. Ideally, you wanna do three repeats for each PD with this experiment, but I'm just gonna get one set of data today. Now, the equation for capacitor discharge is V over V0, that's the PD divided by the initial PD, is equal to E to the power of minus T, that's the time it takes to go to that PD, divided by RC, resistance times capacitance. So in order to plot this on a graph, we should take the natural log of both sides. Ln, or you might call it LUN, I just call it log, because it is a log, it's just a natural log. So log of V over V0 is equal to minus T over RC. Now our log identities tell us that log V over V0 is equal to log V minus log V0, and that's equal to minus T over RC. So what we can do is just plot a graph of log V against time. And that gives us a straight line graph with a negative gradient. Where it hits the y-axis, that's log v0. So that means our gradient is equal to minus one over rc. So to find our capacitance, all we do is swap capacitance and the gradient over. So capacitance is equal to minus one over resistance times the gradient, which is a minus number as well. So we can just say one over r times the gradient. So for me, I end up with a capacitance of 2.1 times 10 to the minus three farads, or 2,100 microfarads. Now, in fact, I do know the capacitance because it's written on it, and it says 2,200 microfarads. So I was 100 microfarads out. 
that's not bad. I could then of course find the percentage error in my capacitance by finding the difference, 100 divided by the actual value, 2200 times by 100. That gives me a percentage error of 4.8%.